in this video we'll be studying constraint relation so actually what do we mean by a constraint relation uh, you can think if one body's uh, motion motion of an object is dependent on or related to the motion of other object uh, for example if one moves by some distance then other has to move by a particular amount of distance so then the relation between their motions it might be relation between their displacement their velocities or their accelerations will be called constraint relation so uh, let's start with the type 1 constraint relation which is uh, based on the length of a string or a tight rope or rod remains constant so in this example these are the two objects one and two name them as one and two just see what are the massive objects that are moving and name them as one two three and four uh, pick a point a fixed point from which their locations are to be marked along the direction of their motions along the line of direction of their motion as two will move in this direction and one will move in this direction so we can say this will be x1 and this will be x2 this is the fixed point or the pulley center can be also a fixed point so in terms of x1 and x2 we have to calculate or we have to find the length of the string okay any other constant distance as this is a fixed point which is attached to the string so this length the distance between the center of pulley and this will remain fixed as both the points are fixed we can take it to be c or we can neglect that any distance which remains constant is useless in the constraint relation okay so total length of the string will be x2 this is x2 and this is x1 and this will be x1 minus c so the total length will be x1 plus x1 minus c plus x2 will be this on differentiating the following we can get 2 dx1 by dt and dx2 by dt c and l will become zero as they are constants so that's why even if you don't take any constant length will not change will not have any effect on the constraint relation so in this dx by dt just look at the way you have assumed these velocity and acceleration these are the assumed direction i'm not sure whether this will move in this direction or not but i have assumed it i have assumed that block 2 will move towards right and block 1 will move towards uh, left block 2 will move towards left and block 1 will move in the downward direction so in the assumed direction if x2 if x1 increases then it will be plus v again dx by dt will be positive if x increases and dx by d2 d2x by oh, dx2 by dt as the x is decreasing as block moves in this direction so it will be minus v2 okay x decreases in the assumed direction its derivative will be negative if x decreases negative and if x increases it will be positive so we get 2v1 equal to v2 in the assumed direction and same relation is followed with the accelerations also in the next example there is a rod which is uh, sliding on the floors and a vertical wall uh, the bottom end has a speed u you have to find the velocity of the upper end which is b so we can say v is u is given and find v this again the fixed point location this point and this point along the direction of their motion x and y we can we could have taken x1 and x2 but we have taken x and y so again the length of rod in terms of x and y will be x square plus l square equal to l square on differentiating we get this as x is increasing dx by dt will be plus u and y is decreasing dy by dt will be minus v so we get bb as x by y u x by y can also be termed as cot theta so we get bb is equal to u cot theta there's an alternate approach to this that as the length of the rod remains constant 
we can say that the velocity of every point has same component along the rod means velocity of point a along the rod and velocity of point b along the rod must be same u has component along the rod which is u cos theta and vb has component vb sin theta along the rod these two must be equal otherwise the wrong rod will either elongate or its length will decrease so this we can say the component of u along the rod is u cos theta and of v is vb sin theta you can get the result vb equal to u cos theta which is the same as we get by the different method in the next example also we can see that component of velocities along the rope u1's component along the rope and u2's component along the road has to be same similarly in the next example uh, we can see that uh, these two blocks are moving with velocity u1 and u2 and we have to find the relation between their velocities again the concept is same you have to take the component of velocities along the string so u2 along the string will be uh, u2 sin theta 2 and component of u1 along the string will be u1 sin theta 1 so they will be equal similar third example is uh, there's a fixed rod in which uh, this movable ring can move in upward or downward direction with the help of string and the block is moving with speed u1 and the ring is moving down with the speed u2 so taking the component of u2 along the string which is again the complete u2 and the component of u1 along the string is u1 cos theta so we get these values this question is similar to the first question we discussed in this video uh, uh, the method is again the same from this fixed point we just locate the positions of all the movable blocks which are x3 x2 and x1 and uh, in terms of these three variables x1 x2 and x3 we will give the length of the rod as this you can see these four times x2 two times x1 upper rod upper string and lower string and single time x3 and on differentiating depending on whether x3 is decreasing or increasing as in this diagram x3 is decreasing as per the given velocity or as per the assumed velocity we'll put negative sign and we get the relation the velocities will have same relation as of accelerations okay uh, just look at a new method which is uh, in my opinion easier and faster to execute so alternate approach is what we'll just draw the fbds showing just tensions on the blocks let the tension these strings are t so the tension on this block will be 2t and on this block will be 4t as the four strings are attached and on this block it will be t only so this is the diagram 2t this is t for 3 block number 3 and this is for block number 2 40 and show their velocities and the power generated by these tensions will be 2t dot v1 f dot v t dot v3 and 40 dot v2 the sum of all these powers must be zero and just by giving them signs if they are opposite then their dot product will be negative if they are same as t and v3 are in same direction positive 2t and v are in same direction positive we will get the same relation as derived earlier so this method tensions will be same so they will be eliminated when equated to zero we'll get this relation this method is known as virtual work done method the second type of uh, constraint relation in which uh, there will be two bodies or surfaces which will remain in contact for them to remain in contact 
the component of their velocities along common normal must be same okay so in this diagram there are two blocks block one and two two is moving sideways towards right and one will be moving in downward direction with the velocity v1 velocity of block two is v2 so we draw the common normal okay this is the common normal and just draw these common normals nearby these velocities so it will be easier to take their components along the common normal okay common normal of oh, component of v1 along common normal will be v1 cos theta and component of v2 along common normal will be v2 sin theta as the angle between common normal and v2 is 90 minus theta so we'll get v2 sin theta as equal to v1 cos theta one more example in which uh, a block one which is fixed in between these two rails which will allow the block one to move in this direction only and block two which is on a floor which can move only in this direction so it is moving with velocity v1 and block two is moving with velocity v2 again we have to find the relation between their velocities or acceleration or displacement so we can say again the component of v1 along common normal as v1 is completely along common normal we can say that component of v1 along common normal is v1 itself whereas the component of v2 along common normal is uh, v2 sin theta so we can say that v1 will be equal to v2 sin theta in the next example uh, there is a rod which is fixed about this point and rotating with angle, angular velocity omega and uh, there is a block which will slide when this rod will rotate and the block will move with the velocity vb again we have to find vb so we can say as the rod is moving with the velocity uh, angular velocity omega the speed of this point will be l omega l is the length of the rod and at the moment when it makes angle theta it is given so we can say this angle will be theta and uh, com common normal will be this important point to be noted that if there's a point like this and a surface surface of the block what will be the common normal common common normal will be a normal which is perpendicular to the surface at least because the point has no surface so common normal will be uh, normal to the surface the single surface in case of a single surface and one point object so just by taking the component of this velocity along common normal which will be l omega sin theta and vb is completely along common normal so we'll, we can have vb is equal to l omega sin theta